three, two. Oh, just don't believe my hair. So in this video, I am going to take some time to answer a sort of like a behind the scenes question that I got on one of my videos a few months ago. The question was quite simple. Could you give us some more information about how you use Roll20 in the sessions? So here it is, how I use Roll20 in my sessions. My name's Ian Rose, and welcome to the In Crowd. So right from the start, I would like to say that this video is not, not sponsored by Roll20 at all. So don't think of me as some kind of Roll20 fanboy or something. I've tried a range of software um, to, for my adventures and this is the one that I'm currently using in this workflow. If something better comes along, then I would actually move. Yes, I guess lo loyalty is not one of my strong points. So I've tried many products in order to get to the point I am at now. I've tried Fantasy Grounds and Realmworks and even Google Drive, but due to certain reasons, I decided to stick with Roll20. You can see my views about Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds on my blog post. It's at inworlds.co.uk. Boy, did that get some flack and some attention, I tell you. So I've already made a video about how I make my overlays and I've also made one about how I made my tokens or how I made my tokens for Roll20. They exist in a weirdly named playlist called Vaguely Creative. So do check those out if you would like to see more of me making overlays and tokens. So today, what are we going to talk about? Well, I thought I would give you a behind the scenes look at not how I create my ventures, but how I get them into Roll20 so I can use them within the sessions. So I need my adventures to be online and easily accessible. So they need to be online because I create my adventures from a range of different locations. I need to be able to access them from my main PC when I'm gaming or streaming the adventure. But I also want them accessible on my MacBook Pro, when I, on my iPad, when I'm out and about creating ideas or recording ideas or just typing up the adventure. Now, coupled with this, I also have, I do have many monitors when um, operational, well, three, when I'm streaming, but I don't want to have numerous programs open. And I did used to use something called Realmworks, which doesn't have an online platform. I really love Realmworks and would still be using it now, but it doesn't have an online platform. and it wasn't compatible with my Mac. I had to put a boot camp on and format a bit of the drive to access it. So it just wasn't working. Um, also, it was taking up screen area on my monitors when I was gaming. So anyway, um, I thought I used Google Drive for a lot of the time, but then I found that my adventures were somewhere else other than Roll20. So I thought, let can I put them all together? Now, this is when I started to use Roll20. Now, I actually have a full pro membership for Roll20. So I do apologize if some of the features I talk about now are not actually available um, on the online account. I've had them for so long. I'm not really aware of what's included and what's not. Um, hopefully what I do is that as I'm streaming, anybody who subscribes to my channel and my Patreons, of course, they actually help to offset the, the yearly cost of Roll20. Okay, so how do I set up my adventures?
So here we are in my Roll20. You can see that I have um, a range of games here. Brigadoon was one of my first um, D&D 5th edition games. Call of Cthulhu, of course, where I did in Gaslight. Um, Lon London days, Victorian London. Um, Leoness there that we are currently playing with um, Lawrence Whitaker. This was a, a channel that um, Scraticus's Dungeon the Dragons channel that I went on to. So here is the Mithras game. So this is the Mithras game that you normally see. Okay, and if I go into this, you will be able to see um, the, the whole sort of like setup. I'm not too sure where it'll come into, but you can see that this is the sort of like the, the setting that everybody is um, familiar with, and it takes a while to um, load in. Um, so this is the setting that everybody is familiar about. And um, I don't want to sort of like um, give any um, hints of what's going on, but here are my show notes well not my show notes my adventure notes for this adventure now i don't want to keep everything in this one area so once an adventure is finished i export it to the other air another area that i can show you now so these are all um past games and they're called mithras adventures and this is where i keep everything that I have used already in one area so it's almost like my backup of everything now I can actually um, drag them from one I can sort of like change them from one area to another area I'm not too sure whether or not you can do that I just changed my name to Inwills here so it fits in nicely um, I have this option called transmogifier down here that I can do it anyway here these are all my adventures that i've ever done so if you remember the story of sewer jack um if you want to find out more then you can look on my website for the adventure notes or go to youtube and actually see the original um adventure so these are all my notes and what i actually do is that i add a handout like such I rename it so say for example this was 8a 8a and I give it a title test document nice and original and then what I do I ignore all this part up here and I just extend this part and I just type straight into here um, I then tend to highlight it and take it up to this size um, which is header three I can then make it bold I can make it different colors but everything's inside roll 20 now just to give you some um, idea let me just delete this let's have a look so this is the overview of sewer jack um, so you can see this is where I've written everything about sewer jack's story the actual what's going on what's not going on um, you can then see here, here's the initial meet and I changed the colors to sort of like give me more um, more ideas if I want to focus in I must make sure that um, I do this thing about lifestyle costs. There's some blue that generally means that it's an, uh, a descriptive part of the adventure and then I put sort of like... Um, notes in I tend to write very brief notes rather than extensive notes but I sort of like file them out what could happen and then I if you notice up here I number them one two three now the interesting thing is roll 20 has this button which allows me to pop it out of roll 20 so what I can do during an adventure is that I press that button, it pops out to roll 20 and can drag it across to another monitor so that I can actually see it right the way through. And what I literally do is number them. And then that means that they go in the right order and I can keep them over here. So these would originally be in the main adventure. And then once I finished, I migrate them over to this backup. So there's the story of Sewer Jack. Um, this is guarding the mistress. Now these down here that you can see, these are actually um, some ideas 
or, or characters. This is Elsa Elmsworth, if you remember, was the female lead, and she has um, wears perfume of the seducer, like that. See, and this actually gives her her stat block there. So this is Nimba Sweet Flame, okay, who um, was um, Eliza's. Elsa's or Eliza's sorry, um, partner in crime, so to speak. So if there's any NPCs and they come down here. Um, so this is the story of Sewer Jack. Um, this is Sniffer, who I split up the party and did some random attacks on this one. This was the shutting down Sniffer. And what I do, I actually um, create some pictures like this that I can use. And the advantage of using everything in Roll20 that I should have said beforehand is this button up here. So if all of a sudden I want to show this to the student, to the um, players, I can just press show players and it will appear and then I can cancel it later. So for example, in the great boar hunt, I did have it actually still in the normal um, Roll20. I had a, a document that said the noble houses of Lindo and at the appropriate moment in time I just shared it with the players and they could actually um, see them. I tend not to put in um, a lot of detail in here okay they tend to be notes I it's almost like my thinking and a lot of the um, monsters or the people that the party are going to interact with, like the assassins, etc. That's kept in the original World 20 in tokens and stat blocks. So let me just show you that before we go. Let's just um, exit this game and sh go into my main game. So this is my main game area. And you'll be able to see that when I actually open the monster section, there's numerous tokens there. So down here, th this is where we are. And this is the current adventure that I'm on. And then if I go down here, see NPCs, this is open. I can open that up and I get all the NPCs. So people like Archie Gordon is here. And sometimes they'll have a stat block as assigned to them. Sometimes they won't. They'll just be a character. Um, down here, if um, these are all handouts that the players have. And then down here are all my monsters. So these are um, Borkins. Okay, that I had. And then here uh, will be their um, stat block. I haven't used them since the update. Um, assassins down here so these are all my assassins that all have their character um, sheet out as well um, so you can see here and then I use it on this mooks one so I've got all the individual hit points for each one two three four five six so to speak and then even things like giant moths if you remember one of the um, sessions that we had um, when they were going to the library and um, we had a giant moth so they're all here and you can see it that they just go on forever and what I tend to do is that rather than actually I just search for them at the beginning and then that's it um, I do have just so you know um, on this I do have all my purchases here as well and um, so these are all the sets that I've actually bought um, map sets and token sets from um, Roll20's marketplace. So I hope that gives you some idea about how I use Roll20 to hold my adventure notes. It's not perfect but it's working at the moment which is the most important thing for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and any of my videos and if you have then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions and personal vlogs. Um, I also produce um, videos like this about um, GMing or about adventure reflections and you can always press that bell button to get a notification when the next video goes live. If you would like to provide some 
additional support, then my link to my Patreon account is down below and any support that you give me is very, very welcome and takes me one step forward, of one step further towards my dream. Okay, so next time I'm going to show you some macros that I use for Roll20 that I have on the bar ready to use and what the um, players can use as well. So, until next time, happy role playing everyone, and I'll see you all later. See ya. Bye.